Hi guys! My name's Aerith, and I'm a rising senior in high school who loves to code. I'm interning over the summer at Juni Learning, and I'm a Juni student. I started out in the AP Computer Science track, barely knowing how to code, and since then I've done Yisiko, as well as web development. I also love to make iPhone apps. Today we're going to make a rock, paper, scissors app in Java, using conditionals, loops, and random numbers. Be sure to review variables and input and output before we start. But don't worry, you'll get a lot of practice with variables, input and output, conditionals, loops, and random numbers while making this game. For our junior students, this falls under Java Level 1. Let's see a demo of how this game works. As you can see, our program asks us to enter a move, rock, paper, or scissors. Let's enter paper. It seems like our opponent also entered paper, and it's a tie. Let's try rock. Our opponent entered paper again, and we lost. Let's try scissors. Our opponent entered rock, and we lost again. If we enter something random, we see that our move isn't valid. And if we enter quit, our program stops. Notice that our opponent's move is being generated randomly. Let's try to make this game ourselves from scratch. Here are the steps we need to take to make our rock, paper, scissors game. One, ask the user to enter in their move. Two, check if the user entered a valid move. Three, randomly generate the opponent's move. Four, figure out if the user won, lost, or tied based on conditionals. Five, using a loop, continue asking the user for their move. And six, check if the user wants to quit. First, we need to import scanner. We can do this by saying import java.util.scanner. Next, let's make our scanner variable. Scanner in equals new scanner system.in, which means that we're getting user input. Next, we can print out a message that asks the user for their move. Say enter your move, type in rock, paper, or scissors. And make sure to add, do print instead of print ln. Finally, we can store our move in a string called my move. How we get the input is doing in dot next line. Perfect. Now we have our move. Next, we have to randomly generate the opponent's move. How can we do this? Well, we need a random number in between 0 and 3, remember including 0 and excluding 3, because we have 3 moves, rock, paper, and scissors. How can we do this? Well, we can get a random number by saying int rand equals math.random. If we just do this, we get a decimal in between 0 and 1. Remember that includes 0 and excludes 1. If we want a random number between 0 and 3, including 0 and excluding 3, all we have to do is multiply by 3. But this still gives us a decimal, but we want an integer. If we put this whole expression in parentheses, we can cast it to an int, just like so. Now, the values for this random number are 0, 1, and 2, because remember it includes 0 but excludes 3. Next, we can use conditionals to map out each random number to a move. Let's first create a string opponent move. And we can set that equal to an empty string for now. Let's start with an if statement. If rand equals 0, remember to use double equal signs. Then we can set opponent move. Oh, it looks like I spelled opponent wrong. We can set opponent move equal to rock. Else if rand equals one, then we can set opponent move equal to paper. Otherwise, we can set opponent move equal to scissors. Finally, let's print out the opponent move. We can use string concatenation by saying opponent move 
and then adding our opponent move variable to the end of that string. Perfect. Our next step is going to be to verify that the move that the user entered is valid. For clarity purposes, I will actually type this above our randomly generated opponent's move. So verify that my move is valid. We can use an if statement here to solve the problem. We want to say if my move isn't rock or if it isn't paper or if it isn't scissors, then we know it isn't valid. We can say if my move equals rock, I remember we'll put an exclamation mark to say it doesn't equal rock. So if it doesn't equal rock and my move doesn't equal paper, and finally, and if my move doesn't equal scissors, don't forget to put the exclamation marks at the start of each one to say not. Then we can print out for the user that your move isn't valid. Then otherwise, if it is valid, then we can resume with the rest of our code. So I'll copy this. So it's Command X if you have a Mac to copy and delete and then Command V to paste. And I will just tab everything over. Perfect. Inside this large else statement, our next step is to calculate if the user won, lost, or tied. The simplest approach is first checking if the user tied with their opponent, because that means that my move should be equal to opponent's move. If my move Remember to use dot equals instead of the two equal signs for strings. If my move equals opponent's move, then we can print out that the user is tied. Else if, and now we can use a giant if statement to check if the user has won. The user wins if they enter rock and their opponent enters scissors if they entered paper and their opponent entered rock, or if they entered scissors and their opponent entered paper. It's gonna be a long one, but bear with me. So we can say if, and then we can say my move dot equals, we'll start with rock, and the opponent's move equals scissors. And we can put all of that in parentheses. And then we can say, or, and then we'll do another set of parentheses. And inside these, we'll say, my move dot equals scissors and opponent move dot equals paper. And then finally, another or, and then another set of parentheses, my move dot equals paper, opponent move that equals rock. As you can see, we've entered all three of the winning scenarios here. In our else if statement, we can print out that the user has won. And finally, else, if the user didn't win and didn't tie, that means they lost. And there we have it. That's our game. Let's try running to see what it looks like. There we go. It asks us to enter our move. Let's do scissors. It looks like our opponent entered rock and we lost. Let's try again. This time, let's enter our random phrase. And it looks like it printed out your move isn't valid. Awesome. Our final step of what we wanna do is we want our program to keep asking the user to enter their move until they type in quit. The first change we want to make is in our first print statement here. We can also say, if you want to quit the game, type in quit. And then before checking that their move is valid, we can check the user 
prepared to quit. And before we actually check if the user quit, let's try to solve the problem on how we can keep asking the user to enter their move. Remember, a loop contains repeated code, so we could use a loop to solve our issue. Specifically, we don't know how many iterations we're going to be doing, we don't know how many times the user wants to play, so we won't be able to use a for loop, but we can use a while loop. Specifically, we'll use a while true loop. Right after we make our scanner, we can write to lead to loop through and keep asking the user to enter a move. You can say while, and then in the parentheses, we'll say true. Remember, every time we use a while true loop, we need to have a break statement in the while true loop to make it stop. Otherwise, it's going to run forever. And all of the code we just typed, we can put in our while loop. I will indent everything over by pressing tab, and there we go. Now we can go and check if the user is entered quit. If my move dot equals, remember again to use dot equals instead of equals equals, quit, then we can use a break statement. Remember, this break statement is going to exit this large while loop and then we'll end here and we can print out a thank you message at the end thanks for playing awesome let's run our code and see what happens let's enter rock looks like our opponent's move was also rock and we tied let's try paper Looks like we tie again. Let's try scissors. Looks like the opponent move his paper, so we won. Yay! Let's try to enter a random move. Hello. Scissor move isn't valid. And finally, let's try quitting. And it says, thanks for playing. And I just noticed that I spelled opponent's move wrong right here. So let me just go quickly fix that. Opponent move. Perfect. We have a great game of rock, paper, scissors right here. And yeah, now it's spelled correctly. You can say quit. Awesome job, guys. I know that was a lot, but hopefully you've become better at typing loops, conditionals, random numbers, getting input and output, and creating variables. But before you go, we have an extension for you. Let's try to add a score to our game. Here are the steps we need to implement to make our extension. One, create two variables that keep track of the number of wins and losses. Two, increment the wins when the user wins. Three, increment the losses when the user loses. Four, after each game, print out the wins and losses. And five, once the user quits, Print out whether the user won more games, lost more games, or won and lost an equal number of games. The first thing we can do is outside our while loop, we can create our score variables. We'll have a wins variable and a losses variable, and they'll both be int. And we'll initially set them to zero. The next thing we want to do is every time we win, increment wins by one, and every time we lose, increment losses by one. We can say wins plus plus. Remember, plus plus is a shorthand notation to increment a number by one. But similarly, we can do losses plus plus when we lost, and we'll do nothing when we tied. Next, at the end of each round, let's print out the wins and losses. wins and losses. We can use string concatenation to make our print statement look more professional. We can say you have one with a space plus our wins plus in a string 
you have won that many games. And similarly, I will copy and paste this code. We can say, you have lost, and then we'll put losses. Awesome. And then finally, right before we say thanks for playing, let's check to see if the user has won more games than the user lost, or lost more games than the user won, or if they were equal and print out an appropriate message. We can use conditionals again. We can say if wins is greater than losses. We can say you won more games than you lost. Else if wins is less than losses, I'm using the greater than and less than operators here. We can print, you lost more games than you won. And we can do a sad face and a happy face for fun. And finally, in the else statement, that means that you won and lost an equal number of games. So we can print out a message saying that you won lost in equal number of games. And we can do a neutral face here. Let's see if our code works. Remember that this section is right outside of our while loop. Let's type in rock. And perfect, it enters our score here. We just lost one game. Let's try rock again. It looks like we won. Let's try scissors. It looks like we tied. And remember, our wins and losses didn't change. Let's type paper. It's like we tied again. Let's do paper again. Looks like the opponent was rock, and we won. Let's say quit. And now at the bottom, we say, you won more games than you lost, and thanks for playing. As a creative suggestion for you, you can also make your own moves. For example, fire defeats all, mwahahaha. Anyways, thanks for watching and hope you had fun making rock, paper, scissors with me. We post coding and math tutorials like this one every week for different coding languages and experience levels. Subscribe to never miss a video or click to continue watching our other tutorials. You can also check out our private and group coding and math courses at junilearning.com. See you next time!